Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel and I just wanted to show off a little bit of my level 90 build, a strength build, Sir Samuel Vimes, commander of the City Watch. And for those of you who aren't aware of Terry Pratchett's Discworld, go read the Night Watch series featuring Samuel Vimes, commander of the Night Watch. It's a very good series, very delightful, good writing very funny it's a comedy and very satirical in regards to epic fantasies and fantasy stories in general and it comes from a place of love so check it out very worthwhile i wanted to make a claymore video for you i like the claymore a lot is it the best no but i like it so very much and i wanted to make it a quick step backstab video but then i realized i'm not good enough I'm not skilled enough to get you pure, unadulterated, quick-step backstabs. I'm not very familiar with quick-step, really. I've only ever used quick-step to get through swamps and difficult terrain in previous Souls titles. I've never really used it in a combat sense. And so here I am, failing for your amusement. So this is more of a Claymore video with... Stormhawk Axe as a follow-up, or rather as a tool in my back pocket, which I'll abuse more later in the video. But we have a little bit of Claymore gameplay just for you to enjoy. Now, a good handful of you may be wondering, why level 90? Well, for one, it's not the level 125 meta bracket, so you don't run into the normal pitfalls that come with the 125 meta bracket, such as constantly being fog-walled before Malekith or Radigan, you know, endgame bosses. You know, you invade, you show up, and then it just sends you home instantly. Not so much fun. Also, in the level 90 bracket, lethality is taken down a few notches. You still feel like you do damage, you still feel like you have a build, you have to make a couple concessions of course, but you still have your build all together and it has an identity, it has a purpose, it has a direction, it has tools up your sleeve. And I really like that. And a lot of people took that approach with the level 80 bracket, but of course when you're in the level 80 bracket, what do people do? Naturally, they want to mid-max, they want to have advantage, so they play 10 levels above you so that they can get that sick, sweet advantage. Oh, and look at that poor backstab. I felt so bad for that poor wizard. Taunter's tongue. I run in, flub everything, and still manage the backstab. Horrible. But I was talking about the level 80 to 90 bracket. Or rather, how people tend to like to play 10 levels above you, no matter what bracket you're in. 10-ish levels. It varies. They like to be as high above you as they can, get all those extra levels for the advantage. And level 90 is in this excellent spot where if they try to go 10 levels above you, oops, they're accidentally in the lowest end of meta level. I believe that's how it works. I think if people were to try to play at level 100, they'd end up in the 125 bracket. I'm not certain of that, but it means they can't go too much higher than 90, I believe. The other plus side is being able to see more parts of the game, new very environments that you don't see at meta level because everybody's about in the same place. I feel like there's a wider range of set pieces. I rather enjoy that. But look at this big brain move. I never have big brain moves like this. Knocks flowing hammer through the wall. And you know what? It makes for a pretty good flask punish as well. Poor guy. His host jumped off the cliff. Such is the life in a Soulsborne PvP highlight video. Poor guy didn't stand a chance. Which reminds me... It's been a little bit since I played the game. I feel like I say that every time. And honestly, if I want to improve at the game, I really need to play more than once a week. And that's kind of the most I've been able to manage as of late, which is unfortunate. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should do some unrecorded arena visits. You know, just to sharpen my fangs a little bit. Get warmed up. Endure on a balance beam so that poor guy falls off with his Ash of War. You may not have noticed this, I noticed it fairly early in this game's lifespan, but if you are at a cliff that falling off would kill you, light and heavy attacks won't send you over the edge. There's like an invisible barrier or something just locking you in place. Ashes of War, they don't have that boon going for them. They don't have that benefit by any means. So it's kind of funny how I'm able to endure, throw in two heavies, miss totally, but the other guy goes off the cliff. Back to my main point, 
I want to practice and I want to retain that which I practice. And it's been a little bit since I've had something that I've practiced so routinely. I feel like my life is quite varied with anything that isn't work, that is. And so, if I can't play for a block of time once a week and improve, maybe I should try to get 20 minutes, a half hour in. And an arena sounds like a great way to do that, though invasions are really why I'm here. I love the varied set pieces, I love being the antagonist in somebody else's narrative. It's all very satisfying to me. The arena, not so much, but the arena may serve a purpose for learning and improving and getting those gamer reflexes up to par now that I'm becoming an older man. 30 is approaching rapidly, isn't it? It's right behind me, isn't it? But I'll shut up about the passage of time for now. Back to the subject of practice to get better at anything in general. <laughs> Pretty broad topic. I found or rediscovered some old YouTube creators who have been in the scene for quite some time, but uh, I rather enjoyed their content because they talk about narratives and stories and they appreciate them quite a bit. They might have their nitpicks, they might have their, you know, little criticisms to throw out there, but for the most part, they do it because they love it. And it kind of sparked this fire in me that I felt I had gone out for a little bit. And that was the desire to create stories and narratives of my own. I spent a good deal of my life learning English very well to the point where I could hopefully write and be a novelist. That was a goal of mine for a good long while, especially throughout my teenage years. And I still would love to do that at some point, but it's tough. Writing a book is really difficult, mostly because it's tremendously difficult to have the attention span to sit down and do that, of course. And then on top of that, you got to make sure the narratives and the characters and the through lines and the prose all fit together oh so neatly. Some people can just shell out a whole bunch of writing, 20 pages in a day, no problem. And then they'll go and just fix it up in post, no problem. And then some people, like me, agonize over every page you manage to eke out, wondering if it's good enough and Editing in post just feels like a nightmare that won't come because you're just too busy trying to get the first thing down right. So if I am to make some sort of half-hearted resolution here and now with you, dear viewer, I think it's... I want to do 20 to 30 minutes of Elden Ring Arena a day, at least minimum. Hopefully I do a couple invasions, but just a little something to stay on top of things. You know, practice some fundamentals do the basics. And even if I don't get better, maybe I will stop getting worse. <laughs> I know plateauing is not much of a real phenomenon when it comes to skills, but maybe it'll help a little bit. And then I also want to do 20 to 30 minutes of some sort of writing. I'll probably start with short stories, little things. Now, will they show up here on this channel? Likely not. It'll be for my own enjoyment, but I feel like I need that uh, variety in my life, those creative outlets. Don't get me wrong, making content for YouTube has been a fun little hobbyist thing for me. But I want to expand my horizons a little more. I'm always interested in doing that. And so I want to see where that'll lead me. I also need to get back into reading physical books, honestly. If I'm going to be frank with myself, I feel like modern technology has dampened my attention span a great deal. And so Audible and other uh, means of getting audiobooks has saved my capacity to read books. But then I realized that lost the capacity to read physical books, words on a page, just flip through it. No distractions, just you and the book. I used to devour books. What happened to me? Yeah, it's not for you to worry about, just my own <laughs> rambling thoughts. This darn video was supposed to be about claymores, and here I am making resolutions of things I want to accomplish. Taking small baby steps, like playing the video game every day, just a little bit, just to get better. Reading actually reading books and then hopefully doing some of my own writing which will be very well rounded I hope and a step in the right direction for me overall let's get back to the main topic at hand claymores I want to gush about claymores that's the whole point of the video it's why you're here you're probably scratching your head wondering why I'm using the stormhawk axe so much and eh, the utility is a little hard to pass up and the damage output is insane 
I always feel Gimp's not using it, which is bad. It's a crutch. I need to get over it. Maybe I'll substitute for something else. Maybe I should have just had this build be five claymores with unique ashes of war for different situations including <gasps> storm collar budget stormhawk axe that's what i should have done ah the things you realize in retrospect but look at this poor guy on screen for a moment he doesn't have an elevator license and sir samuel vines is here to enforce the law <laughs> oh poor guy <laughs> it cracked me up outrunning him to the elevator just to deny it and just denying it with light attacks on the claymore is so silly to me. but yeah the claymore i love the claymore i love the way it looks it's a very attractive weapon i never liked the claymore too much in previous souls titles it was all right i used it a little bit in dark souls 3 it was good but it just you know there's other weapons i gravitate towards more and part of it was the look of the weapon. I'm not too much a fan of gold, or at least I wasn't in the earlier titles of the Souls games. So when they made the cross guard and pommel of the claim more silver, or uh, more of a regular metal color, I was delighted. It looked like a much more schnazzy weapon, and I was all for it. Now, if I could have my ideal weapon, because the claim is still pretty nice. Sir Samuel Vimes is supposed to be the commander of the Night Watch, in a town that pays the Night Watch next to nothing, and so they don't have the resources for high-end equipment. That's why he's wearing the rusty chainmail in my iteration of him here. And watch me get parried. What a parry king. And then he was going to go for an extra parry. I bet that jump attack would have connected. Oh, we were so close. But yeah, Samuel Vimes, underfunded commander of the town guard, essentially. Claymore's a little nice for him. If I could have my wish and my want, I would want the Iron Greatsword with the move set of the Claymore. Oh, I love the lunging R2 attack on it. That would be so amazing. And you know what? Watch me vaporize my poor red teammate and the host. That red didn't deserve that. I'm the real monster. I didn't think about it. I didn't use my little head. I'm usually better when I'm in 2v2s. Or, in that case, a 2v1, where the red had already done the work of probably taking out the guy's phantom. Usually, I'm a lot smarter. I pick a weapon that has a narrow hitbox so that I can avoid my own teammate. Not there. Not there. Huge disappointment, I am. I was talking about my silly wish to have the Claymore moveset on the Iron Greatsword because it's really weird to me that the Claymore is the only one with a lunge. Maybe the DLC will give us something, but I feel like the Iron Greatsword would be so delicious if it had a lunge. It's exactly what I want. I also want Square Off back on Greatswords. I think that'd be phenomenal. I know some people want uh, Square Off on Katanas as well because they want to do the whole Sekiro stance thing. And I don't blame them. I think that'd be pretty cool. So I think uh, Square Off should be able to go on Katanas as well as Great Swords. And then if we could get Unsheath on Straight Swords, that would be pretty neat. I don't think Unsheath on a Great Sword would be too good of an idea, but there's been rumors of a great Katana class coming out in the DLC, so maybe that is already a possibility to come. I'm not too well versed on what all is going to show up with the DLC and the detailed look at the trailer as well as reading over the interview with Miyazaki is probably the upper limit of what I'll do in terms of DLC research. I'm sure more things will come to light and there's probably more things that I just haven't seen yet and I'm going to keep a lot of that a mystery for my own sake. I was pretty darn good about keeping all spoilers to a minimum for Elden Ring when it was coming out. I knew that they were working on a title and I avoided all social media that might hint at it like the plague. I didn't even watch network tests, nothing of the sort. I was vaguely aware of uh, a character having Melania's help and that was about it. I was so totally in the dark. And let me tell you, it was a magical experience when I did get to play the game for the first time with my brother. It was a grand time. It was magical. Absolutely magical. And I'm so terribly excited for the DLC to bring back a little bit of that magic. And quite frankly, it's going to bring a lot of small fish to this big pond. I'm going to feel like a shark, even though I'm not terribly good at the game. 
there's going to be a lot of people who are just brain dead in comparison. So I'm going to have a great time with all those people coming back. Those invasions are going to be pretty sweet. Heck, I know after the trailer dropped, there was a good little resurgence of people coming back to the game. I think that's died off a little bit by now, but still, it's exciting to see that there's going to be more prospects. That there's going to be new content. That there's going to be excitement. Well, that was pretty redundant and lame-brained of myself. I've always been a better uh, writer than I've been an orator. I'm horrible when it comes to speaking, but either way, I can say this. Thank you for watching this video today. Thank you for looking at my little adventures, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take some time for yourself, enjoy a little responsible treat, and bust out the claymore and get some sick R2s. Oh, they're delicious. So very, very delicious. Bye now.